Hello and welcome to the second tutorial on how to make a Pong game. To start this tutorial, we will download an editor we need to edit the hex code. You can look at some of your options by going to hex.org, Documentation, Introduction, and then Editors and IDEs. There are many options, however I will be using Sublime Text, as that's my personal favourite. I've also used Atom, which isn't listed here, and that works just as well. There are some add-ons you have to install for Sublime Text if you will be using that, and you can follow those simple instructions there. Once you have Sublime Text installed, or any of whatever editor you choose, open it up and go to Open Folder, and then in the Game Projects folder, which we created previously, click on the Pong folder and open it up. As you can see, the template did create uh, a fair bit of code for us. Now, if you look at the folder names, uh, if, if you look at the file name, sorry, inside the source folder, there's a menu state and a play state. In these tutorials, at least this tutorial series on how to make a Pong game, uh, there will not be a menu, so we can delete that. Oops. However, that's the state that's initially run when we open the window, so it will crash if we try and run it now. To fix that, open the main file and change menu state to play state and save it. Now if you open play state, you can see that it's written a little bit of code for us. It's a play state that extends our hex flexor or flex state and this is the code where this is all the code that we'll, we will put for our scene. So it has a create function, which is run once when we open our window, a destroy function, which is called when we close it, and an update function, which is called every frame that the window is open. So now that you understand the play state, create a new file called paddle, save it in your source folder under capital P paddle dot hx then in here write import flexor dot flex sprite and go down a few lines and write class paddle again with the capital P extends flex sprite then opening and closing curly brackets with a few lines what this does is we are saying we have a class so a type of object called paddle, which is a type of hexflexor sprite. Now a sprite is any visual that you can generally see in a 2D game, so it could be anything from the player character to little particle effects. Now in here, we will create a new method, like public, which means any code that has access to this paddle object can call this, which is important. Public function new and then in standard brackets, put a capital X, comma, capital Y. And then next to those, put an opening and closing curly bracket. What this does is it's letting us create a paddle object and it has to specify the initial X and the initial Y for where our paddle will start. For instance, the left paddle will have a low X, but the right paddle will have a high X over here. Now, because we are extending from a Hexflexor sprite, we need to let Hexflexor know that we have created a new sprite. So to do that, write super, and then in brackets, x, y. So this lets the flex sprite know, oh, and then a semicolon. This lets the flex sprite know that we are creating a new sprite at a specific x and y. Below this, but override, because we are overriding the behavior put out by flex sprite. Override, public, function, update, and then nothing in those brackets, and then curly brackets. This function is called every frame that our paddle is visible. Well, even when it's not visible. Um, so this one's fine at the moment. However, we need to make the paddle have a visual. 
So we're not going to actually draw a paddle with, with an image editing program because our paddle is just going to be a simple rectangle. So to make a rectangle, write make graphic with a capital G and then in brackets we want to put the width of it so let's set that to be 10 and the height of it which we will set to be 100 and a colour. Now this code doesn't actually know what a colour is at the moment just like it didn't know what a flex sprite was before we imported it. You can think of it almost as importing some knowledge. Let's import the code that talks about colours from Hexflexel. Write import flexel dot util as in utilities dot flex color. Make sure you spell it C O L O R. That might be different depending on your nationality, but it's always spelled C O L O R here. Now, uh, for the third argument, so after the these two commas, write capital F L X color dot and you can see lots of colors that have been programmed into Hexflexel. You could choose any of these, but I'm going to choose white. Now that we have that working, uh, our paddle class is pretty much done, uh, at least for now. All it's going to do is show a rectangle at a specific X and Y. We haven't programmed it to move up and down or respond to collisions yet. We will do that in future episodes. Go back to your play state because we want to add a paddle to the scene. Underneath super.create, where we're telling Hexflexel that we have created a scene, write add, and then in brackets, we have to tell Hexflexel what object we want to add to the scene. So let's say we want to add a new paddle, remember with the capital P, and then in brackets, an X and a Y, because remember that's what we put here. Right in here, because this will be the left paddle, let's say, no, 30, and let's put it 200 high, and then put a semicolon. Oops. Now, to run the project, again, open game projects, open your terminal, you may have already done this, type cd, space, and drag the folder, the pong folder into it, and then click enter. Now type lime test Nico and run and you will see the project start. I know we've got an error. Module paddle does not define paddle. Alright, what we need to do to fix this is import paddle. Just like that. And let's see if it runs. And it's compiling. <laughs> and there we go, we've got a paddle. Now the reason why that didn't initially work is because we hadn't told it about the knowledge that we had written paddle. So when we wrote paddle here, it had no idea what we were talking about. So now that we have written uh, the left paddle, let's add one to the right. So right. So duplicate this line just like that and you can do that on Sublime by pressing Control shift d on Windows and change, we could change the X, the initial X, to be something like 400 which would move it to the right of, to, of the screen, however it might not be exactly correct. So what we will instead do is write flex G, capital F and capital G and this is talking about all of the hex flex or global variables, don't worry too much about that yet and then write width. Now this would put it at the very right of the screen so we wouldn't be able to see it. So subtract 40 off that. 30 for the width of the paddle and 10, no, 10 for the width of the paddle and 30 so it has the same uh, offset as this paddle. And save it. Now when it compiles, we now have two evenly balanced paddles on both sides. 
In the next tutorial, we will make them move up and down. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you've had any issues, contact me on Twitter with at 5mixer and I'll be sure to help. Thank you.